Three new cases of a deadly brain-eating amoeba have been reported in Kerala. While this is an extremely rare case, but it is also fatal. Hello and welcome to Drishti IIS. My name is Saloni Nankiolier. And in this video, we will look at the disease that is caused by this amoeba and also some ways of preventing it. So what is this brain-eating amoeba? Brain-eating amoeba is a single-celled organism. It is a protozoa that lives in warm freshwater bodies like ponds, lakes, rivers or hot springs. And the scientific name for this is Neglaria fowleri. There might be a different pronunciation for this, but this is the scientific name. And the term brain-eating amoeba is slightly misleading in itself because it is not actually eating up the brain. It is infecting the brain tissues. And the disease that it is causing is primary amoebic meningoencephalitis or PAM. This primary amoebic meningoencephalitis is the swelling up of meninges or brain tissues due to a primary infection that is being caused by this amoeba. And PAM is an extremely rare disease because not a lot of cases or incidents have been reported for this disease globally, but it is fatal and deadly because the mortality rate for this disease globally is 97%. That's a huge number. which means that roughly everybody who contracts the disease dies. This is how serious the situation of PAM in the world is. Now, how does it enter the system? So, the entry point for the disease is nose. It enters our body via nose and through the olfactory nerve, it reaches up the brain tissues. Through the olfactory nerve. Let's say a person is swimming in contaminated water, in the water that is contaminated by this amoeba, then that amoeba can enter the system via nose and it can reach up the brain tissues. Or even in the cases of ritualistic nasal cleaning, if we are using contaminated water, even in those cases, it can enter the system via nose and reach up the brain tissues. So just by drinking water that is contaminated by amoeba, you will not contract the disease. It has to happen via nose. It has to be transmitted via nose. And this is a non-communicable disease, which means that it is not transmitted from one person to another. Now, if we talk about some major symptoms, the major symptoms of this disease, the initial symptoms, they basically mimic meningitis. So, the initial systems, uh, symptoms would be like your headache or nausea, vomiting, dizziness. Initially, this would happen. And towards the later stages, there might even be seizure or hallucination or stiffness of the neck. So, the most problematic situation here is that within 5 to 18 days of contracting the disease, the person dies. So, we do not have a lot of window to diagnose and to treat the disease because for diagnosis, the initial symptoms, they mimic meningitis. So, for a very long time, we are not able to identify the disease or diagnose the disease. And after that, we do not have a lot of window to cure the disease. This is a major challenge with the symptom and diagnosis. Now, if we talk about the recent cases and st uh, statistics in Kerala. So, Kerala had cases earlier also, but between 2023 and 25, these cases have increased. Multiple cases have been reported. And in July 2023, a 15-year-old girl, she died in the Kozikode district. And up until July 2024, there was not even a single survivor of this disease in India. So only in July 2024, one person survived the disease and he became the 11th PAM survivor. And 11th PAM survivor globally. So he became the 11th PAM survivor up until before and the first in India. So before that, there was not even a single survivor for the disease in India. This is how serious the situation is. And in 2024 and 25, several suspected cases, especially in the northern districts, have come up. And the hot and humid and the warm climate of India is basically favoring the transmission of this disease. And globally, cases are mostly reported from the US, Pakistan and some Asian countries. Now, if we talk about the treatment and challenges, the major issue here is that there is no guaranteed cure. Because this is an extremely rare disease, not a lot of research has been done in this field. So, there is no guaranteed cure for the disease. Some drugs in combination are used like azithromycin or amphotocerin B. So, some drugs are being used in combination therapy, but there is no guaranteed treatment or no guaranteed cure for this thing. 
and the challenge as i already mentioned that the window that we have is only 5 to 18 days and the diagnosis is very very late because these uh, symptoms they are mimicking meningitis so diagnosis happens late treatment is not sure and treatment also happens late all these things because of all these things we are not able to contain the disease so as a preventive way what can we do we can not we can try chlorination of our water bodies and we can not allow water to sit stagnant in these fresh water bodies so we should not be swimming in areas where we have this stagnant fresh water stagnant warm fresh water or we should not be making use of contaminated water for our nasal cleaning purposes so all these things they need to be taken care of chlorination and bleaching all these things should happen so that we are able to contain the disease now that was all for today's video this is a gloomy situation but let us hope that we are able to survive through it now let's practice a question for prelims consider the following statements about nigleria fowleri it spreads through drinking contaminated water it is commonly found in warm fresh water bodies the infection it causes has a high fatality rate select the correct answer a one only b two only c two and three only d one and two only please provide your answers in the comment section and we will meet in the next video for more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications